Thickening Polyurethane Resin for Brush-On Applications In this video we're going to explain the basic process, and it's a very simple process, of thickening polyurethane resin for brush-up applications like mother molds, brushed-in castings, and brushed-on resin molds for casting silicone. Now in this tutorial I'm just going to make a quick copy of my logo using brushed in TC804. Now we're going to be using TC804 because it's an easy one to one volume ratio and a seven to eight minute working time. And it's mainly for the seven to eight minute working time that I'm using it for this application. And of course this has about a 30 to 60 minute demold at room temperature and it's a hard impact resistant 75D. Now this starts off fairly low viscosity. This has a 200 centipoise mixed viscosity, but we're going to be adding fiber thick to it to make it brushable. Now, the TC804, this is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, but this is really important here. A lot of one-to-one -one volume ratios are not one-to-one -one by weight. This one is 100A to 90B by weight. Now the ratio is an important issue that we'll come back to later as we start thickening the resin. Now the way we're going to thicken this is with fiber thick thickening agent. Now fiber thick is a small fiber thickening agent and it's preferable to fumed silica thickeners because it doesn't suspend in the air so it doesn't become as much of a breathing hazard as you have with fumed silica products. That said, it's always a good idea to wear a dust mask or respirator anytime you're working with powdered thickening agents or fillers. And this is a very low density product too, so this is about a pound that I'm working with here that makes up for about a gallon of mass. Now I'm going to add the thickening agent to the part B first. And again, even though this is one to one by volume, because it's 100A to 90B by weight, we're gonna weigh out the B first. So in this case, we're going to do 400 grams of A and 360 grams of B. So I'm pouring out the 360 grams of B first. And the reason we're doing that weight ratio is as soon as we start thickening up the uh, resin with the fiber thick, that's going to make those volume measurements inaccurate. So if we try to do it by volume, that would throw us off at this point, unless we pre-measured out our A and B in two separate cups. And me being a guy that likes to just use one mixing cup, kind of like I just cook with one pot, I like to minimize the mess in my mixing cups by just using one cup. So by doing it by weight, that eliminates a lot of the extra mess that you would have of multiple mixing cups. So here I've got 360 grams of B that I've thickened up with the fiber thick. And by stirring that into the B first, that also gives us more working time because the clock starts ticking down as soon as I add the part A. And there's no wrong answer to how much of the fiber thick you can add. You can make this a really thick frosting-like paste or more of a light paste. It all just depends on the application. The fiber thick is inert, so it doesn't change the chemistry of the resin. Now I'm stirring that in very slowly. I've added my 400 grams of part A. And depending on the application, if you need it to be thicker, you can add more fiber thick at this point. And that's what I'm going to do here because I want this really thick. I wanted to show you just how thick you can get this by adding just additional fiber thick. And again, it doesn't change the chemistry of the resin, so you can add as much as you want. Obviously, if you add too much, it's going to become unworkable, but it's still going to set up as a hard plastic. So it still has a little bit of slump there, so I'm going to add a couple more handfuls of fiber thick. And once I have the consistency I want, I'm ready to start spreading this in my mold with a disposable brush. So again, you can mix as much or as little with your resin as is required for the job at hand. That's one of the really nice things about this technique is it allows you to adjust a resin formula to your liking because there's going to be applications where you're going to want a thin, more like a gel coat kind of consistency. And there's other times when you're going to need more of like a spackle consistency to stay up on a vertical surface. It all depends on the application. So if you're doing large open face molds like I'm doing here with my logo, then typically you want something that's going to be a little bit thicker to stay put. And also this is really handy when you're embedding hardware, hanging hardware, in the back of a big open face mold piece like this. Now, one of the other important details when you're thickening resin like this, especially when you're doing mother molds and applications where you're using a lot of resin in one batch, 
it's a good idea to get the resin out of the mixing bucket and into the mold as soon as possible. Now the reason for that is polyurethane resin is very mass sensitive. And even though this has a seven to eight minute working time at room temperature, when we have that sitting in the bucket, it starts heating up. The exotherm from that reaction starts heating up. And the more mass we have in the bucket, the more that accelerates that batch. So if we're not careful, we could wind up with that setting up much faster than we want it to. So by getting it out of the bucket and spread out as soon as possible, we get the maximum amount of working time. So just remember, you don't want to treat this like paint where you're working out of the bucket, just grabbing a little bit on your brush at a time. Otherwise, it's going to set up much faster than the usual set time on the data sheet. Now, it's always important to make sure you're using disposable brushes for this process. I go through a lot of tongue depressors and chip brushes or throwaway brushes when I'm doing this process because there's not any solvent that will break this down out of a paintbrush. So make sure you're using throwaway brushes for this process. Now you have plenty of time if you get this spread out so you get the full working time of the resin. So you have plenty of time to adjust it to your liking and you can use multiple layers if need be. So as soon as that gels, we can go back and mix up another layer and apply it. If you're using multiple layers though, you wanna make sure you do those as soon as possible so they bond well to the previous layer. Now remember that polyurethane resin is mass sensitive. So the thinner the cast, the longer it will take to set up completely. And the thicker the cast, the faster it will set up. So remember that this particular cast set up in right around an hour. And then it was set up to a level where I could easily sand on it and cut on it with a razor knife. And remember, if you've done everything in accordance with the prophecy, it will be a very hard impact resistant resin, even with the thickening agent in it. And it will easily sand and clean up with a razor knife or a wood rasp. Wood rasp is probably my favorite tool for cleaning up those rough edges, especially on mother molds. And there we have our cast ready to be primed and painted. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna keep this quick and we're just gonna apply some SEM high build primer to the part. And then we can come back and paint this in another video. SEM high build primer is a great way to finish out casts like this. And it's also a great way to prepare 3D printed parts for molding. And you might have seen that in my previous video on cure inhibition. I'll link to that in the end screen if you haven't seen that already. Now this is a very simple casting, but you can see the benefit to being able to brush this into an open face mold like this. We can also embed hardware in the back for hanging. And of course we can use the same technique for mother molds, for large support shells where we wanna make a lightweight resin mother mold. We can use it for that kind of application. Here I am applying it over a silicone mold to make a lightweight mother mold that will easily snap back together. And it can also be used for resin molds for silicone casting. Those of you who saw my series last month on making the little silicone parasitic twin, that's how I made the mold for that parasitic twin was with brushed on resin using thickened TC808 and 804. And then I used that to cast TC5110F silicone. Now be sure to check the video description for links to all of the products I used in this tutorial. And of course, I'll put some additional resources like the cure inhibition video at the end screen. And of course, if you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, thanks for watching.